Earth's magnetic field is weakening fast and scientists say a major shift could be coming. What happened next could impact the entire planet. Hi, this is Josephine and welcome or welcome back to the People's Perspective where we tackle to the complex world of social and political issues. Thank you for joining in. First of all, sorry for the missing video last week. I usually write and film over the weekend, but last Friday I came down with a high fever and I had to spend weekend recovering. Now, honestly, the past two weeks have been wild in global news. We've lost the Pope, got the new Pope. Okay, not that guy, but still a guy from US. Yeah, that one. Meanwhile, Pakistan and India were on the brink of nuclear war but apparently Trump managed to broker a ceasefire. We will see how long does it last. Unfortunately, there is still no ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine, even though Trump himself claimed he could end it in a day. In Germany, authorities are now trying to block the most popular party, the one likely to win the next election. And over in Romania, despite the EU best efforts, voters chose an anti-EU president in the first turn of the presidential elections. So I lump all of this into one messy basket. Politicians doing what politicians do, keeping us distracted while the real issues get ignored right in front of us. But not here, not here, today, like always, we focus on what matters. So let's get into it. rewind again almost two weeks ago when a strange blackout hit Spain, Portugal and even parts of France and Belgium. So what caused it? Some blame the climate, the others point fingers at the climate policies and the unstable green energy. So like usual, it's hard to say for sure, but hopefully in the years to come, we might get answers. But that got me thinking. Let's talk about something connected to it, our planet, its magnetic field. Do you know how a compass works? The needle points north because it's magnetic and aligns with Earth's magnetic field. Cool, right? You passed school, my dear. So there is something that not everyone get taught at school. The magnetic poles are shifting. One of my teachers uh, mentioned it to us, so casually, like, fun fact, and it's true. We are actually living in a time when a pole shift could happen again, anytime. Terrifying. A little, because in theory that could mean massive disturbances or even worse. So, what exactly is a pole shift? So, there are two types of... Uh, Pole shifts, geomagnetic reversal. This is when the magnetic north and south poles completely switch places. Imagine your compass needle doing a 180, that's a full reversal. The last one happened about 780,000 years ago during the Brunes Matyuma reversal. And the second reversal, which we are talking, and it's magnetic pole wonder. This is when the poles drift to the new location without flipping. So, hmm. fun fact, the magnetic North Pole is currently racing towards Siberia at about 20 kilometers per year. Here is how it works. Inside the Earth, we've got a molten iron core churning like a cosmic lava lamp. That motion generates our magnetic field, a protective shield that blocks solar radiation and helps birds, for example, to migrate. And helps your phone GPS too. But this field isn't stable. NASA says it's been weakening by about 5% every century. There is even a strange area called the South Atlantic Anomaly, where the field is especially weak. So why does the magnetic field behave like this? It's chaos in the core. The molten iron flows unpredictably like this lava lamp, or think of it like steering the soup. 
Sometimes the spheres align, sometimes they don't. Over time, this can destabilize the field and trigger a reversal. On average, pole reversals happen every 200 to 300,000 years. And since the last one was 780,000 years ago, uh, we are a bit overdue. Scientists are watching closely. So the latest data from 2024 and uh, from the European Space Agency reported that the magnetic field is shifting faster than expected. The North Pole is moving at record speed. Should we worry? Not exactly. According to the stylish published in the Nature, full reversal take between 1 to 10,000 years. During that time, the magnetic field might weaken, split into smaller poles, or get chaotic, but it doesn't just vanish. So here is the good news. Earth has flipped its poles many times, and life it went on. No mass extinctions have ever been linked to magnetic reversals. But what about the real world impacts? If a pole shift happens, here is what could be affected. First of all, satellites. A weaker magnetic field means more exposure to solar radiation, which could damage satellites. Other thing, power grids. In 2003, a solar storm caused 4 billion in damages. Imagine a stronger one today. Hmm? GPS could go out, affecting everything from Uber drivers to military systems. And our dear animals and their migrations. Bears and whales may get confused, but they would have adopted as they did before. And yes, your compass, my dear, it would be useless. But let's keep it real. When was the last time you used one? Some researchers even ask whether a weaker magnetic field could influence weather patterns by letting more cosmic rays through. That might sound a bit like a climate change theory, right? Well, it's not where the big money goes, unfortunately. Most research still focuses on CO2 levels and using shift pool to uh, research to build better satellites. But still, it's worth thinking about, and could it be that the climate change is changing because the magnetic poles are changing? It is happening at high speed right now, as climate is changing also. Now, let's go to social media and have a look at all those apocalyptic posts on whatever social media you might saw. Posts saying that pole shifts will cause earthquakes, tsunamis, or apocalypse. Well, I did, and I even kind of researched those and know where to go in case of this emergency. I don't know if I would have time because you never know, but at least I know where. There is no evidence liking, uh, linking uh, sh uh, pole shifts to sudden disasters. Reversers are slow and the field never fully disappears. It just gets messy and weaker, maybe 10% of its usual strength. So hopefully if someone shouting end of the world, they are selling you and me a movie script, not a science. Right now, in May 2025, scientists are monitoring the magnetic field and yes, it's weakening. But there is no sign of imminent flip. Still, the more we understand now, the better we can prepare. Um, think stronger power grids and smarter satellite system. Lastly, do you think this information about the pole change is more important or you find the political theater more interesting because this is about earth's hidden system the invisible forces that quietly protect us pole shifts remind us that our planet is alive dynamic and always changing are pole shifts fascinating scary or both drop a comment and let me know what other earth mysteries you want to dive uh, into next time Dear friends, thank you as always for your comments and that you took time to do it. It really made my week to check out your thoughts and I find it amazing. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And last week we were uh, diving into the bilateral agreement between the Switzerland and EU. So the comments from the last week, last 
last video. <laughs> Uh, firstly, thank you to Will Bloom, who basically wrote an episode on his own. Uh, this is a fascinating read, so please go uh, to his comment on the last video. I actually pinned it, so it's easy to uh, find. But uh, Mr. Bloom, one more time, personally, thank you. And uh, what should I say? First of all, Europe is a continent, as, as you might notice, even shifts in magnetic poles shouldn't affect its existence. Now, as a Polish citizen, I am concerned about influences from both sides, the East and the West. Kind of were disturbing us all the time. So the club you are mentioning, uh, especially the EU, is a club with important members and then more important members, like, you know, the ones, who aren't willing to engage in dialogue, conversation on understanding. It's a case of my way or no way, as we've seen, for example, with illegal immigration or Brexit. When one of the members wanted to leave, that attitude stands in direct opposition to the values Switzerland is built on. It also goes against what I believe. Growing up, I was taught or indoctrinated, as I find it more sweeting for word, into thinking it was democracy. But what we were seeing is far from that. It's <laughs> nothing but a mockery of democracy, allegedly, in my opinion, for legal reasons. And now, Mandran Magalan, 9430, was uh, playing a catch you moment. And so congratulations, Mandran Magalan, you got me. I am proud to announce that you are the first person to call me right wing. Thank you very much. Until now, people just call me walk. So thank you. Uh, this is where I wanted to be, somewhere in the middle. Now, when it comes to voting, uh, no, the Switzerland haven't voted on everything. This is also what you clarified. But from my side, to clarify, yes, previous bilateral agreement were voted on. Now, the situation looks uh, like that. Actually, uh, the Federal Council um, has decided not to subject the so-called AU Adaptation Treaty to a mandatory referendum. It is now divided in four individual packages. It means that if this will be voted on, it will have to be done through the optional referendum. And that means that at least 50,000 signatures would then have to be collected for each individual package just that the people can have say at all. At this moment, I can just hope that in some time I will make a video where I would correct myself and admit being spreading the right-wing populist chatter. Ukra and Fenugreek have in common. They might just save our water. Texas researchers have discovered that the steamy stuff from okra and the gel from fenugreek seeds can remove up to 90% from microplastic from water. Even better, that current synthetic methods. Here is how it works. Scientists soak okra pods and blended fenugreek seeds, then dry the extract into the powder. One gram in a liter of water, boom, microplastic clump and sink. Fenugreek removed 93 okra nailed 84% in ocean water. A combo of both cleared 77% in fresh water. And the best part? It's non-toxic and biodegradable, unlike the synthetic polymers we currently use. This green innovation could help clean drinking water without adding more chemicals. Nature, once again, show us the way. If you find value in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Please like if you like it or unlike if you don't. And if you have any thoughts, drop a comment below. I am uploading stories like this every Sunday evening Turkish time. So I hope we meet again. But for now, thank you for watching till the end. And as always, stay informed, stay engaged and remember Knowledge is the key.